have to actually like do a sit in meditation. It becomes like life becomes a meditation after like, you know, after a while you consistent. So you could just be driving in the car. You would have your hands up a certain way and you would feel chi flow. You would feel your own energies. It's a beautiful it's thing. <laughs> It's so true. I didn't even know I wasn't on mute. Oops. <laughs> I'm over here laughing. Like, it's so true. Hmm. Mark, you can go ahead and take it away. I just put um, okay. a message in. So whenever you're ready. All right. We... I guess I'll pin my video. All right, we start off with stretching, of course. So let's do, all right. Let's see, let me, I wanna get my full body right there, at least as much as I could. Ah, oh, but you can't see. Oh, I can need to get a setup or something like different camera. Okay. So let's start off. Um, fingers interlocked. All right. You're going to move the wrist like this. And then you're going to uh, spin your knee. All right. Your right knee. And let's go. Left knee. Switch. All right, good. Spin your waist around. Switch. All right. Now you can kneel, put your hands on your knees. All right, and we're gonna Spin around. Reverse. Good, spread the feet apart, more than shoulder width apart. You're gonna spin the knees, hip go up and down. Reverse. Good. Next head, and rotate neck. Reverse. Up and down, big yes. Look left, look right. Now shoulder to shoulder, relieving tension in the body. All right, now hands on the waist, rotate shoulders back. Reverse, forward. Good, now big circles, rotate back. Reverse. Good, now up and down. Stretch back. All 
All right, now open chest. You're gonna go like this, elbows up, and you're gonna go back like this. Back, elbows back, come in, then like that. Go. Good. Bring, now bring the fists together, elbows out like this, and you're gonna twist. Now reach back, you're gonna go back, and keep twisting, go. Good. Fingers interlocked. Bring them up. Rotate the shoulders. The hands like this. Good. Now keep them up. Lean to the left. much as you could. Knees straight. Elbows straight. Come up. Lean to the right. Deep. Come up. Now go back. Stretch back. Come up. Keep hands up. Now you're going to come down. You're gonna to touch the floor, knees straight. We're gonna bounce, okay? We're gonna go one, two, three, ten. Twenty. To the left, go over to the left and go. Try to touch the floor, knees straight, as much as you could. To the right, go. Good. Next, this is uh, swing your arms, horse stunts. Get the, the fluid going, it's fine, so just watch me. You're gonna lean over like this, and you're gonna spin around. But notice, your hands completely straight, and elbows not like bent, all right? So you see just how we did this? Lean to the left, we lean to the right, went, we went back. It's like that, you're just kind of twisting And we're gonna do 10 times each side, all right? Let's go. One. Reverse, next side. Good. Right. Next, we're going to run in place. 
Bring your right knee up, this high now, and you're gonna run. When you bring this high now, this goes up, so it's like opposite, okay? And run in place, knees up high, go. Good. Now jump 20 times. Good. Last one. Ooh. This is the horse stance. So watch me. You're gonna come down like this. Side view. It's like you're sitting on a chair. Back straight, all right? Stance is really important. And we're gonna do about 30 bounces, so Feet um, about shoulder width apart, calm down, and let's go. One, two, seven, eight, ten. Twenty. Thirty, twenty more. Forty. All right, good. Okay. That was just the stretching. <laughs> just to prepare, um, get the blood pumping. Now we can do some Qigong meditation. Let you catch your breath. I'm gonna breathe slow and deep. So let's just, uh, we're gonna do five slow breaths like this. So you breathe in slow and then exhale. Okay. You breathe in when the hands come up, exhale. Natural breath. Okay. And go. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Just relax the breath. Then what we're gonna do is gonna inhale, we're gonna come up, exhale, come down. Four breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Okay, so let's start the meditation. Simple Qigong. These are the stances. We start off 
So your knees are gonna be slightly bent, all right? Feet about shoulder width apart. You're not like stand up completely straight. Your knees slightly bent, not too much. Just where you're relaxed, all right? Hands are gonna start off in front of the Dantian. This is your lower Dantian. This is where you store your chi energy, right? I'm gonna start here. So these are the stances. This is the second pose. Third. Fourth. Fifth pose. Six. And we switch. Seventh. All right? And we can do a bit of Tai Chi movement Stuff like that, all right? So let's start hand in front of the lower Dantian. Keep tongue to the roof of the mouth uh, throughout the whole practice. Tongue to the roof of the mouth. You're breathing in and out the nose only, okay? Natural breath, you're not doing breath work, right? But you're just focused on the breath, all right? As we go through the practice, any tingling sensation in your palms, your hands, your head, any part of the body, you're actually making contact with cosmic energy. You're sensing your, pre your energy body, all right? So let's go. In and out the nose, just relax into it. Focus on the breath. Relax the shoulders. Make sure it's not tense, just let it relax. Move in the second pose like you hug in a tree. Be as still as possible. Just focus on the breath. Relax the shoulders even more. Third position, prayer position. Relax the shoulders. Focus on the breath. Tongue to the roof of the mouth.
Just allow the mind to run. Don't suppress the mind. Just focus on the breath. Fourth position, tree pose, palms up, like you an antenna. Still. Fifth position, bring the palms down, facing the earth, palms to the side. It's relaxing to Be still. Any tingling sensations in the fingertips, palms, face, you're bringing light into the body. Circulating chi. This is how you raise the magneticism of your life. Next pose, bring the right hand up, leave the left palm down. Relaxing. This is a standing meditation. Feel the sunlight. Feel the abundance.
switch, bring the left palm up, right palm down. Relax the shoulders. Bring the right palm up, back into tree pose. Now bring the palms in the front, like right in front of your navel. And what we're going to do when you breathe in, you're going to expand the hands. When you exhale, you're going to contract. Breathe in, expand. <clears throat> exhale, contract. Sink the mind, body, and breath as one. Do this for one minute. Breathe in, expand, exhale, contract. Feel the magneticism. Feel the hand still being connected. This is how you're connected to everything in the universe. Through this subtle energy. Now do it vertically. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. Feel the flow. This is the energy that powers the nervous system. Next, bring the hands out like this and contract in. And when you inhale, push out. And 
When you exhale, come in, inhale, push out. Exhale, contract in, inhale, push out. Sink the mind, body, and breath as one. Next, make a ball in front of you. Focus on the breath. Make a ball. And feel the energy. Feel that magneticism. That's your light body, energy body. You can make the ball big, like a spiral-like energy. Make it big, make it small. What I want you to do is just move it around. This is how you move in stillness. You can walk around. You could then just move the hands around and feel the pranic energy in the air. This is a walking meditation, moving meditation. Move intuitively. Just focus on the energy. Bring your legs into it. your own Tai Chi. Move with the flow. Now let's go back shoulders, feet shoulder width apart. Go back into second pose. If you're hugging a tree, just be still. Knees slightly bent. Relax the shoulders even more. Tongue to the roof of the mouth, focus on. Third position, prayer position.
Next position, tree pose. Feel that cosmic energy raining down on you, even if it's a slight tingling on the fingertips, any part of the body, be as still as possible. Feel it up. Relax the shoulders even more. Be relaxed, allow the energy to flow. Next position, palms down facing the earth. Be in this position for two minutes. Feel that energy, that love. Feel a nervous system being powered up. Very still. Next, bring the right palm up, leave the left palm down.
It's like you're a tree converting light into a new tree. This is how you power up the nervous system. This is true meditation. Switch left hand up, right palm down. Feel the energy raining down. Bring your left palm down. Bring both hands up, but wide, big, looking up, eyes closed, just be in acceptance, this abundance of cosmic energy. Feel the love. Bring the hands in the front and make a ball. Because we're energetically stronger than we was 20 minutes ago. Now when you move, continue to move in that stillness. Now I want you to picture yourself in nature. You're on the beach, you're in the park and you're just walking, but you're in, still in stillness and you're still bringing in the cosmic energy. This is what the ancients meant by connecting to nature. It wasn't just hugging a tree, it was connecting to the divine intelligence that grows the tree, that directs the bees, digests your food. 
This is how you're able to meditate for hours and hours and hours. Next, just stand up straight, knees straight and palms up, elbows tucked on the ribs. That's just collect energy, relax. Be still as you could, as still as you could be. Just allow the breath and energy to run. Be in this position for three minutes. hands up even more, size like this. Feel the love. The only thing in life you have to learn is how to get out of the way. Get out of the way. Abundance is something you are in your true nature. You are the energy that powers this world. The more you have of this energy, the more you can direct nature forces, the more you can manifest and create your reality. Bring the hands into prayer position. And we're just going to show gratitude for every breath. Show gratitude to this unconditional love that powers the nervous system, keeps us alive. Every day, show up to the moment. And then for that, we say, Ami Tofo. It's a saying that the Shaolin monk said, Amitofo means infinite light and wisdom to you. Okay. <clears throat> right. So, 
Once again, if you felt anything, even if as subtle as it could be, you're making contact with cosmic energy, you're actually becoming one with nature, with the cosmos. And there was actually this saying, um, it was this Catholic woman. This Catholic woman was, uh, she was able to levitate. She had spiritual abilities and, you know, people was wondering how, uh, you know, they asked her, how are you able to do these supernatural, you know, how did you develop the supernatural abilities? And she said one thing, she said, uh, I just sit and I allow God to love me. That's all she said. That's how she was able to levitate. And it was like, interesting, you know, but when you, when you get into it, you see, even though she's Catholic, right? She said she sits and she allows God to love the lover. She meditated day in, day out. And this is the energy that comes into the body. And the more you have of it, the more it wakes up dormant parts of the brain. Because again, over time, okay, parts of our brain started to shut off, go dormant, because it wasn't being used. Because we live in an addictive society, the body gets lazy. Like I said before, if you take ecstasy, for example, and you get addicted to ecstasy, right? Ecstasy stimulates the body to start secreting serotonin, dopamine, happy chemicals. But if you keep taking it every day and every day over a long period of time, the body will, no, will get lazy and it wouldn't secrete dopamine and serotonin anymore because it's like, why should I do it? You, you're only going to take ecstasy to stimulate me to do it anyway. So it gets lazy and not part, and not part of the, the neurons don't fire organically anymore. This is why our body doesn't create minerals as much as it did. You can start to do it, but that, that takes discipline because you can't, you, to, for the body to create the best minerals, it isn't just energy cultivation. You also have to abstain from sex and understand that sex depletes you of vital minerals and enzymes and, and certain um, even ingredients of light, okay? Because there's something about the sexual fluids that, it, you know, it, again, it, if you ever watch, uh, it's for both man and woman, but I'm gonna use semen as an example. If you ever watch those shows where they um, investigate in a rape case, they would come in with a light and they would look for the semen because the semen glows in the dark, okay? Because it's, it's a light. And it's the same for ovarian fluid for women, you see? So both man and woman, it's not just a, a male and female thing, even though a male could, he does lose more on ejaculation, so to say, you know? So there's a part of it where you cultivate energy, but the more you do it, the more it will show to you where it's where your magic is leaking out. See that the, the whole key to what we call a cult or spirituality, you know, um, it's looking at the very traits and habits in your life that impede you to do magic in the 3D realm. Okay, because in back in the day, I, I should say the good ancestral part not the, the bastard ancestral part of us. We, we were always beings that would take energy and convert it into matter, okay? That was a magical thing that we did, okay? That was that instantaneous manifestation. But due to the genetics being hijacked, it's a lot of stories to that, right? Now you start to see that these non-spiritual beings that, that uh, you could say the parasitic elite, the ones that are trying to inject us with some things and stuff like that, they, they take matter and they convert it into energy. They don't, have, they don't have that true connection to the subtle planes. They don't have souls like us. So what they do is, like you look at fossil fuels, they will take gross matter and burn it into something subtle. But the issue with that is, 
when you take fossil fuels or you take the and burn and cr try to create oil, take oil from the earth or whatever, you create pollution. So you're producing energy, but there's an aftermath of creating pollution. It's just like if you eat a pizza, you eat a burger, you eat uh, some meat, it's the body is using about probably 0.0001% of that food. The other 99% is just shit that you have to, that has to come out, okay? So <clears throat> we keep thinking that we have to take matter and convert it into energy. But with this skill set and purity, character development, you're taking subtle energy and you're using it and you're empowering the nervous system, okay? And you could convert that energy into matter, into an experience, okay? So this is much deeper than saying an affirmation or saying creating a vision board, which, which is good. But at the same time, that's not the real work. Even physical work, that's not, that's not really the real work. That's just you playing with some forms. But when you have to tap into the formless, into that spirituality, and that's when you then gauge into looking at your internal blockages, okay? That's what you have to do. You have to then see, okay, I'm, I'm feeling this presence, but where is it leaking out in my life? Then you have to go like a Freemason, a Mason, you grab the cement, right? You water it up and you patch up your soul, you patch it up to keep it. So there's one way where you're cultivating energy. Then there's another thing with virtuous behavior, not too much lust. Not too much sex. It don't matter if you in a marriage. I, I don't. If if you having sex every day, like a you know, and, and you still depleting energy. It don't matter if you feel like you in love with the person. It's still not in accordance with law. That's why when you look at the ancient Egypt and parts of America, because you know it's you know it's this thing where people think that for some reason Africa is more sacred than America, and I think that's the uh, mind control. That's the colonizers again making people, Af making everyone that's black think they from Africa when there's ancient ruins and sacred lands in America. Remember all of this was just one line anyway. Okay, so you're not African American, you know? So <clears throat> when you start to see even like the line that you from, your, your intestinal flora is in accordance with that line, especially being indigenous, you know? A Caucasian still has a soul, but you know, you just have to, work more to purify the blood where then they could reactivate their melanin. So some white people look white, but they're actually black. You know, it's just a lot of the mucus pus in, in them. If you ever read the book, uh, Mucusless Diet, this uh, Arnold Rett, he was a white man, but when he started eating fruits and, you know, and cleansing himself, getting sunlight, he started to actually look like an olive color. They thought he's of another race. So it's deeper in color, all right? It's something in your genetics. So Going back to this, now remember I always say, we did that for 30 minutes. And when you were moving the energy around, you did the ball, notice in that stillness, you still felt, you still could have felt the energy even when you were moving. So this is how you're able to go and walk out in nature and still be in meditation, okay? You could actually be in meditation for days if you were in that stillness. So imagine powering yourself up taking a break from the food, taking a break from the sex. And if you do eat, you know, you eat something watery like a fruit so that doesn't take too, too much away from your nerve energy. So remember, your nervous system, okay, the body is what? A one big brain, okay? It, it's, we've fragmented it into different organs, but the body's immersed with brain fluid. That's all it has is just straight brain fluids. It's an intelligence. Okay, the first thing that grew in the, in the embryo is the cerebrum. And like we said before, it stretches down. The brain grows, okay, in, and this is the spinal cord and the tentacles, the nervous system. It's just one big brain. And then what happens is we deplete the energy to where the brain has to work fragmented, okay? The organs and stuff, they all come in from one powerhouse, one center. All of the organs still represent a, a big brain, an intelligence. So disease is never hurting you, okay? 
the key, the root thing that destroyed us is that the mind and body integration was lost. So the mind has mental cravings saying it's hungry when the body doesn't really even want it. You notice when you say you are hungry or you feeling to eat, and I'm a victim to this at times a lot, but you, you, it's a mental craving. But if you feel your body, your body ain't even hungry. It don't really even want to eat. That's what I mean. It's not true Kung Fu spirituality embracing the moment is the integration of the mind, breath, and body as one. So when you feel that mental craving, get past the thought forms because the thought forms don't have light of their own. This is the spiritual attack. Okay, the spiritual attack is the very thought forms that impede you from your spiritual evolution. You don't have to be around nobody. You don't have to have no one suppressing you. They don't have to be no white supremacy, nothing like that. It could literally just be you sitting in your room and that thought form would come in. And right then, then with daily meditation, you then have to make that decision and be like, is this with my growth? Will this give me light or will it steal it away? Okay, so you start to see now that this is a skill set, but it isn't enough. Okay, daily meditation is the foundation, but what daily meditation does is it then shows you how to develop your character to keep connecting and to keep it. It don't just make sense getting the money. You don't have to know how to keep it and use it. Okay. So that's the part of it. So now you start to see where the deadly sins come in, that you just deplete yourself. So even what Eckhart told with his book, The Power of Now, or people say embrace the moment, is very cliche. You hear that all the time. And I don't feel like the majority of people still need to understand that that is an occult, spiritual, esoteric term. Even in the mystery schools, what we say by embrace the moment it deals with the interfacing of energy, of you, the true you, the life essence. So if you eat something every day, you take a drug, the body then, which is a brain, which is an expression of cosmic energy, which is an expression of your soul, of your mind, okay? The body, 70% of the nerve energy is now digesting that dead food. You're not in the moment because 70% of you is converting and digesting this food, okay? How do you keep that, uh, that 70% that keeps digesting food and bring it into the moment, okay? Even thoughts, even being on social media all day, you know, that's fine. But there got to be a time where you decide to be like a monk. Not, I'm not saying to live like a monk where you give up sex and give up food and eat a leaf a day. But... There have to be moments in your life where you say, you know what, I can choose this day to be a monk and power up. If you do this for pick Sunday, a day where, you know, the kid, you give the kids to someone else and you have this time to yourself and just power up for hours and hours and hours and then say your affirmations. This is the quickest way to change your life. The quickest way. All right. So again, this is self-empowerment, and this is the stuff that some of the motivational speakers need to touch on, because when you just say, oh, the struggle, you got to struggle to get there, you got, well, if you feel disconnected, then, you know, you're probably going to have to work more. So for example, someone that doesn't harness energy and meditate, someone that likes to have a lot of sex, someone that likes to eat a lot, someone that, that has a lot of of greed and jealousy and they do have to do more physical work that is true you got to strive for it you got to work you got to struggle you got to that is a cult that's a mental delusion okay because but in a certain state of consciousness it is true so a brother okay a sister whatever that if you had a job you know especially like for example a man that had a job he hate but he comes home to his wife, you know, she make him a cooked meal. You know, already know cooked food takes your nerve energy away. He doesn't meditate. They have sex. He loses his seed then. And he feels trapped. So he's 
He doesn't know how to change his circumstance. He doesn't even know the power that's backed up behind it. And neither does, neither does the sisters. If they trap somewhere, they keep thinking it's something I have to physically do because they only represent themselves as the physical body. With these practices, with yoga, you start to become more soul conscious, more energy conscious. Then you work more of your subtle bodies to will things to you, okay? So again, the most powerful thing you can do to increase your manifesting power, go out in nature and just be still, meditate. And when you still and you start to feel the energy, you can move around. That's how you increase your manifesting power. Take off your shoes, you know, ground your feet. This is a loving place, but the mental delusion, the lack of soul, mind, and body integration causes a fragmentation and a war inside self, okay? So, I mean, if any questions, any comments, you know, you could go ahead, but, you know, I always have to end it with a good little prep talk. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for saying all that you said. It's um, interesting to notice the work that's happening, but to hear it summarized by another soul is really beautiful. So thank you. Okay, great, great. I'm glad it resonated, man. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I really, really appreciated this. And I made myself go through the whole thing without stopping. And I really felt the energy when we were doing the ball. Like I felt it before, but I was just cheesing so hard when I did it today because I really felt it. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So thank you so much. All right, that's what's up, man. Good, yeah, it's powerful. You know, we don't know. You know, we keep thinking it's, you know, that's why they do these things with the, you know, CNN and news and stuff. Cause they, anytime, for example, if they see too much people becoming aware of this, they will orchestrate chaos. They would send a police in, in, over there to go kill some kid, not really just to, it ain't about the kid itself. It's just to get you to not be conscious of those other planes. They want you to stay stuck in the body. And when you stuck in the body, you in fear. The body fears, spirit don't fear shit, you see? So now you start to see where the main thing that's the true currency to these, cults to these uh so these think tanks right that that implanted these ideas into us the main the, the the main power to them is human attention it ain't about gold and oil and and you know and money and they know all that it ain't about that it's about harnessing human attention they would drop a bomb okay somewhere in the middle of nowhere they wouldn't even hit nowhere and they will put it out on cnn just to get your attention. These demented elites, they like little fucking children, okay? Constantly wanting your attention. Because remember, when it comes to a demon, an archon, a secondary uh, uh, entities, what we call them, they do not have a light of their own. The way they evolve is from harnessing the attention from people that have souls. So you watch Freddy Krueger and you see, you know, uh, um, was it Freddy Krueger? I think it was with the dreams, right? And at the end, she turned his back to him. And then he was, then he started screaming, you know, cause that, that was like, that's scary to him. Like, you're not scared anymore. She turned his back to him and he dissipated. So all those thought forms and entities in the astral plane you got to be careful when people constantly, oh, well, let's go astral project. Let's go do these things. But the issue with that is if you haven't developed a virtuous life and cultivated and embraced your true nature, these particular thought forms can trick you into thinking, oh, well, these are angels coming to me and they're giving me these things. And they're, well, that's the issue. If someone is still addicted to lust, still doing certain things and they still fragmented. They don't come to the moment, but yet they learn in the astral travel, they doing these things. They could, they could kind of make themselves a target. You have to, the, the layer of spiritual protection is in virtue. That's where you get your nutrition. 
You see, so people talk about the, the you know, the fruits and stuff, but really the sustainable, the, when you get on the fruits, the sustainable um, nutrition is the light. That's why Jesus said, I have food that you know nothing about, okay? And once again, virt virtuous behavior is an ancient genetic language of light, okay? So when you raise that frequency, then you kind of have this layer of protection and it's probably safer for you then to go and travel to different places. But until then, you kind of traveling with your, your body like exposed and shit. You know, your mind is, is frail. You know, you, got, you can't just trust your mind like that, man. You got to cultivate a mind that you're supposed to trust. You don't just trust your mind. You got to cultivate the character in order to trust that mind. Until then, your mind is suspect. Until you get your shit right. You see, so once again, the expansion is the desire of the light. It's the light that seeks you. You don't seek the light. The beast don't desire this shit. He just wants sex, food, entertainment. Food and sex are the greatest bonding tools, you know, with a couple, you know? So it, it gets, it's an interesting game we put ourselves in. You know, I don't know. I, I think maybe, maybe perfection was a little boring. Maybe we wanted a challenge or something, but it's a game. You're playing a game. And the purpose of all games when you play Xbox is what? To level up your avatar to level up, you gotta keep leveling up. And, and the funny thing is to level up, you just have to allow it to happen. It's not, it's hard to do that. It's, it's easier to just go all over, you know, let me look around, let me stress, let me, oh, I don't have no money. I, let me, I gotta go look for a job. I gotta do this and that, you know, and, oh, that, that dude, he looked good, you know, I want him or I, you know, it's just, your mind will just go and run and run and run and then, but it's hard to sit and be, that's, that's the key thing to mastery. So now it is, we have to be our true nature in a world of temptation, okay? So that's, that's the thing, to be an angel, but at the same time in, in a world where every, the minute you walk out your door, it's just some dumb shit every day. Put on your mask, you know? We got these COVID ambassadors here. And I, you must have to be fat and stupid to be a COVID ambassador. That's like a prerequisite because they literally antagonize you over the dumbest things, man. I'm telling you, try to charge you $150. No one around you, you have to wear a mask with no one around you. Like, come on, man. You know, so anyway, I just ranting now. <laughs> yeah, so. But I enjoyed it, man. So I think, uh, you know, we did a standing up meditation today. And just again, the key thing is consistency and day to day, every day. That's a commitment. You know, even if you don't have like, the light will make you more virtuous. It will. Because when I first started doing it, I, I, did, I really didn't have that much discipline. I, I, I didn't, you know, but I said, you know what? Nigga, if you can commit to something, do this, do something. And then over time, after one year, no, I'll say two years. After two years, I don't, I don't know. I did a nine hour meditation and everything changed. I was like, okay, you know, relationship left me. Everything changed after that. So keep it up. You, you powerful, it at your core. It's given to you freely. When they say turn the other cheek, that don't mean be a punk. People keep thinking that mean like, you know, don't stand up against human trafficking. No, you stand up against all them things, but don't stand against something without your spiritual foundation. Don't do that. When you just said, turn the other cheek, it made me feel like you're just checking the blind spot, actually. <laughs> is anybody yeah. else here? Or is, who's with me? Like, is my, is my spiritual squad with me? Who's, who's got my back? Uh -huh. but, Exactly. You, you, we are. And you would be exposed. You think that you're doing some noble shit. All you did was just make yourself a target. And it wasn't even effective. So them days of the, the days of the Malcolm X, the Martin Luther King, or them days gone, man. We don't, all of us now, 
have to step into our godliness. That's what it is. And then stand against the corruption in our godliness. Okay, because it don't make sense. We try, like, like niggas be talking against the police here. And I'd be like, bro, what I don't get with y'all, if we had no police here on this island in the Bahamas, you really think that would make it better? <laughs> y'all can't even police y'all self. If y'all don't want to bring order, then why you want to get rid of the police? Off rip. Let me tell man, if there was no police here, the same niggas in my community would be trying to come after me and rob me because there is no repercussion. So now we say, oh, the police, yeah, they doing stuff. Because why? Because they working for a bank. This ain't no government. This is a central bank. We don't have no MPs and no politicians. It's just a corporation. And now they trying to ticket us for you know all that shit. And it's illegal. We know that. But let's be honest, though. How much of y'all really would want to police y'all own community for real? You know? So y'all don't, y'all don't have the order within, but yet y'all talking against the police. Think about that. You know, so no, I, I ain't saying, oh, you know, well, it's the same thing, but okay, the white cops, they doing their thing. But brother, if there is no police at all, you around here talking black power. You really think them same niggas that you really think they are boys for real? Do they have the order within? So it gotta, you gotta really, we say things. And, and because there is, there was, there are police and there was the Jim Crow and all that stuff, but we got to really look at how we treat each other. That's really what the, the communal living, that's the empowerment. Okay. Like, again, we can't be saying these things and a, a sister walk, walk, she walking past, she always getting harassed by men. You know what I mean? We got to start to look more within. Okay. If I don't trust you, brother, if we have a million dollars here and it's like 10 of us, and then y'all ain't even thinking how to split it fairly. Y'all trying to see how to get these other niggas out there. I trying to get some for me. You know what I mean? That you you know that that would automatically make some some of these niggas be like, yo, like I would have had more if he was in here. You know, we don't trust each other, and that's what I tell even some of these rosters here. We don't trust each other. Yo, I we already know what what okay with the white supremacy, but we gotta develop that that. The, in that uh, character, the way we treat our sisters, the way we treat ourselves, that's the foundation. Just to, just to overthrow a government, that, that ain't, I mean, any, we could go and protest and do all that stuff, but get rid of him. But because our psycho-spiritual pathology is still off, we would still manifest a tyrant government. We still would do it because rulership within, if there is no rulership within, we will manifest external, externally a rulership without. And that's the last ditch effort for us to try to control ourselves. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Um, this time I was sure to, to make some notes so that when I'm uploading the video, there's like little, um, notes on what you're talking about. So I definitely appreciate this. I appreciate you um, committing to doing this every Saturday. I appreciate the people that's coming and committing to themselves for doing this. Because like you said, like we're doing the work, like this right here, like what we're in right now is a war on consciousness. So these little tools like Qigong and um, yoga and eating right, breathing right, doing, doing all of that, those are your tools for the spiritual war. This is how we're gonna make it through. So I appreciate you so much, brother. And I hope everyone has a beautiful Saturday. Okay. And I will see y'all soon. Thank y'all. My feet tingling. My <laughs> <laughs> infinite light wisdom. Love and peace, y'all. <laughs>